Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Midweek Bible Study for the Selang Church of Christ. If you have been to our building, you know where we are. If, on the other hand, you are joining us from someplace else in the world or someplace else in the Philippines, we are located in Bayan, or city proper, of Silang, Cavite, Philippines, which is approximately 30 miles or 50 kilometers south of Ninoy Aquino International Airport, located in downtown Manila. We wish to say welcome to our study, and we hope that our study of God's Word is of benefit to you. As always, uh, we'll start with a prayer request, but we're going to offer the prayer in a more general. Uh, Miss Alma, do you have anything going on that uh, we need to know about or that we could pray for? It's a uh, ano, healthy, uh, good health and protection okay. for my family. Okay. Resi, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, My prayer request, come back. Uh, yes. Uh, for Thanksgiving and protection for my family and for safe travel going home. Okay. Anna Lynn, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my prayer requests uh, are... Uh, first of all, thanksgiving for all the blessings that we receive every day, especially for the answered prayer that I got. Continuous healing for Zaldi and Mildred, and good health for all of us. That's all, sir. Thank you. Okay. And beautiful woman, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Unmute, so please. morning, everyone. I'm not used to the mute, unmute. Okay. Uh, prayers for the people of Israel and um, healing prayers for Claudio Rosella, Mr. Kelly, um, Teresa, Marge, and uh, Tonya. And I would like to add my first cousin who has a brain tumor. I'm going to go on surgery. Her name is Kelly. Okay. Rio, good morning. Good morning. As we always do uh, Thanksgiving for all the blessings and trials that we encounter in life. And continuous knowledge for Chloe for the upcoming journalism contest. This December. The journalist where? Journalism contest. Okay. Now, Chloe's journalism contest, right? Yes. Okay. She'll do great. Okay. Katrina, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, brother. Um, my prayer request for today and hope, um, I think for it will take time. I'm just asking for guidance for my family. Um, we're going to, we're going through a difficulty right now. I will not go into details, but I'll just ask for prayers from me. Okay. Mary Faye, good morning. Good morning, everyone. My prayer request, um, of course, will always be thanksgiving for everything. And I do have a personal prayer like for my brother and his family. Yeah, just like a dream, um, I can't go also into details, but I really wanted for them to pass on this, to overcome this difficult time that they are facing. So pray for them. So, and also good help and guidance for every one of us. Okay. Christina, good morning. Unmute, please. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my prayer for today is to, to keep my heart 
uh, decide what's the best for for my for my family and help my family to uh, help me to to fight for the battles uh, I am right now. Okay, Julianne. Everyone, my prayer request is to be help for everyone, including for my family and us. For mommy Wilma, she's praying for her sister and mom. Okay, and Miss Wilma, I see you hiding over there. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My prayer request, come on. Uh, for my sister-in-law, sir. Continuous prayer for my sister-in-law. That's really a praise at this point. We're just glad she's doing well. Thank you. Okay. All right, everybody. Join me in prayer, please. Dear Lord, we come before you this morning. Thankful, Lord, that you have given us so many blessings. Thankful, Lord, that we have the opportunity to serve you on a continuous and ongoing basis. Lord, our attitude should always be an attitude of gratitude. We ask, Lord, for the many requests that we have for physical healing, for Zaldi and Mildred, Kelly, for Claudio and Rosella, for Marge and Tanya. Lord, we ask that you look down upon these unspoken requests and Help us as we grow forward, help the families to overcome the difficulties that they are going through. We also thank you, Lord, for the uh, healing that uh, is being experienced by uh, Ms. Wilma's sister-in-law. We ask, Lord, that she be granted her full well-being and be restored to full fellowship. Lord, we continue to pray for the world around us, including the people of Israel, we ask that they be granted peace. And Lord, we continue to serve you this day and each day. Through Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. It's been a few weeks since we've uh, had our midweek Bible study. Uh, last week, I had to go to immigration, and I don't remember what happened the week before that. Does anybody remember? I don't know that it's important. What we're going to take a look at today is we've been studying the restoration principle for some period of time. However, let's take a look at what the role of the Bible is in the restoration principle. Let's go to 2 John chapter 9. 2 John chapter 1, verse 9. Give us verse 9, Alma. Second John. That's in the back of the book. <laughs> Hold on. That's not sec second John. Second John. And unmute yourself, please. One three oh six. Page number one three zero six. Second John, chapter one, verse nine. Nine. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching of both the Father and the Son. Okay. Verse 10, please, Resi. 
verse 10, If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. And verse 11, please. Gentlemen. And verse 11 says, For whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. Okay. You see, on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus prayed for his disciples, as well as for all who would come to believe in him through the preached word. His prayer was that the believers would have a unity among themselves. And they could make a sincere appeal on behalf of a lost world. Now let's go to the Gospel of John, chapter 17. The Big John, chapter 17, and verse 20. Page 1159. Cora? Give me a thumbs up when you're there. Um, John 17, what? 20. John's chapter 17, verse 20, it says, I do not ask for this only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Okay, I do not ask for these only, but for those who will believe. 21, please. Katrina? 21 says, That all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, and I am in you. May they 20. also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Okay. 22, please. Christina? The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Okay, and 23, Miss Wilma. It says, 23? Yes, please. Yes. I in them and you are and you in me that they may become perfectly one so that the world may you may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. Okay, so what we see is that Jesus Christ prayed for unity. However, unity requires that we hold something in common upon what or upon whom should we be united? When we look at the world around us today, we see a Christendom that is divided. We see hundreds of groups that have sprung up all over the world, <clears throat> many of them in the last 50 or 100 years. Is this what Christ prayed for? Is this the answer to his prayer for the oneness of those who claim to be his people? The answer to this should be obvious, though. If a sincere effort is going to be made to unify those who claim to believe in Christ, well, what would we use to bring this unification about? What standard of authority should we appeal to? What person are we going to encourage them to rally around and be united in? And once again, I think the answers are obvious. Jesus is the only one that can unite us. He is the who. And the words of Christ is the what that can unite us. During this lesson, we're going to discuss the role of Jesus Christ in the restoration principle. 
However, this lesson is going to look at the standard by which we can be united in Christ. Now, as we look through the word of God, we're going to see unity stress. Jesus Christ obviously would not have prayed for unity of his people unless unity was possible. But at the same time, there has to be some measure, some object, some something we, uh, that we can be united in. Now, there are many encouragements given in the New Testament in regards to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Julie, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Thumbs up when you're there, everybody. Are you guys all there? Christina, you okay? What? Mary Faye. No, I know you're there. Unmute. Am I the one who... No, you're not reading. I'm just, I want you to encourage them because it's taking them time to find the pages. Tell them, don't give up. It'll come. <laughs> yes. Uh, it will take time for you to find uh, the page usually just like I am when I was. It will be... It is really hard at the start, but then as you as you always open the Bibles, like go to church, you'll be able to find it easily. Thank you, Mary Faye. Julie. Yes, exactly. That's true. <laughs> First, First Corinthians up, chapter yeah. one, verse 10. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 10. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. So we're supposed to all speak the same things, and there be no divisions among us, and that we be united in the same mind and in the same judgment. Romans chapter 16. Verse 17, Romans 16, 17, Rio. Romans 16, 17. I appeal yes, to you. Please. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. So what we see is he wants us to avoid people who cause division. The Apostle Paul, the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul tells us to avoid these people. And that we... Stay united. First Corinthians chapter four, verse six. First Corinthians chapter four, verse six. Mary Faye. First Corinthians chapter four, verse six it says, Now, brothers and sisters, I have applied these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying. Do not go beyond what is written. Then you will not be pop up in being a follower of one of us over against the other. So don't become followers of men. Remain followers of Christ. And don't go beyond what is written. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8. This is almost a memory verse, but all we won't know it. Galatians 1.8.
got to ask my uh, my group. Do you guys know Galatians one eight by heart yet, Cat? No, brother. No. Julie. Not yet. Katrina. Uh, Rio. Mary Faye. Not yet. Okay. Alma, you got it. Galatians 1.20? No, 1 verse 8. Uh, 1 verse 8, okay. Galatians chapter 1, verse 8. Verse, I believe, it says, But even if we are, or an angel from heaven, should preach to you and gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be a curse. In other words, don't listen to people who are preaching contrary gospels. Be united in the gospel as it is preached in the New Testament. We are to endeavor uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. Ressi? Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. Verse 2, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and one of, and one, and of one mind. Okay. Like-minded, being the same love and having one accord of one mind. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11, uh, verse 1. Philippians chapter 4, verse 1. Annalyn? Philippians chapter 4, verse 1 says, Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. Stand firm in the Lord. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 6, Katrina. Colossians 2, 6. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Okay, and verse 7, Christina. Unmute, please. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, and abounding in thanksgiving. So, as you receive Christ, walk in him, rooted, built up in him, established in the faith. That's what we're supposed to do. You're in Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. This will look. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. 3, 16. 3, 16. Sorry. 3, 16. Kita mo. And Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and, and abdomin, um, admonishing and one another in all wisdom, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Okay. So what we see is Christ wants unity. And the unity of God's people is really closely tied to a belief and a holding to the word of God. Mankind, us, we have been given an authoritative record of the will of God for the benefit of who? Of all men. The authority of Jesus, as well as the authority of God the Father, stands behind the New Testament in Revelations. If men will only respect 
the authority that is given to us, then we could be unified in our beliefs and our practices. It's when we ignore the authority that we become divided and we run into grave problems. The authority of Christ over mankind is well established in the New Testament. It's established because he is God in the flesh. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Matthew 1, 23. Julie? Are you guys over? Give her a thumbs up if you're there, guys. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23 says here, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means and you will. with us. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Means what? God with us. So we see that, right? John chapter 1, start us in verse 1. And let's go through verse 3. Start us in verse 1, please. Rio? John 1, 1. One, 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 six. Be a thumbs up when you're there, guys. Okay. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, give us verse 2, Mary Faye. Verse 2, he was with God in the beginning. Okay, go ahead and give us verse 3, Mary Faye. And verse 3, through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made. Give us verse 14 in John 1, please, Alma. Verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen this his glory, glory as of the, the only Son. Okay. Resi, give us Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. Colossians 2, 9. Galatians 2 9. Make sure everybody's there. Thumbs up when you're there, guys. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Ressi. And when James and Cephas That's and John. Great verse. Uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. Ah, Colossian. Colossian. Colossian, sir? Yes, please. Okay. I thought it is Galatian. 2 verse 9. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. The whole fullness of deity. What does that word mean, deity? Anybody? Godness. It does. Very good, Gressy. You did good. Uh, because once again, the Greek word here contains some meanings that we sometimes don't get in English. It is divinity. He is God. So people may want to argue, but we're not arguing. We're just going to teach. Okay. So what we see is, first of all, Jesus the Christ is God 
in the flesh. Not only that, he is the one through whom the Father speaks to mankind today. Anybody want to guess where we're going for the first proof text? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Animate, Hebrews 1, 1. Sir, Hebrews 1, 1. Yes, please. Page 1 to 7, 9. Is everybody there? Okay. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 says, Long ago... At many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. Okay, and verse 2, Cora. Verse 2, it says, But in the least, in these days, in these last days, he had spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heirs of all things, through whom also he created the world. Okay, so who does God speak to us through today? Through his son. Through his son. Very good. And we see that in, right there in Hebrews chapter 1, right? Matthew 17, 5. Katrina? To the left, Christina. Punta ka sa left. Matthew. Matthew what? 17, 5. Matthew 17, 5. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to who? The Christ. The Jesus the Christ. Christ. Jesus the Christ, right? So he is God in the flesh, and he is the one through whom the Father speaks. But additionally, John chapter 14, verse 6. John 14, 6. Christina? Then what? Oh. Chapter 14, oh, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So how do we get to the Father? Except Jesus. through Jesus. Through Jesus. Through Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, right? Um. Uh, we're also going to see Matthew 28, 18. Ms. Wilma? Matthew what, sir? 28, 18. Why don't you give it to us from memory, Julie? 8 and 8, 18 to 20? No, just 18. I am on Jesus said to them, all of our can have an SB. I will read it, sir. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There we go. How much authority? All the authority. And not only that, Miss Wilma, I didn't skip over you. John 12, 48. 
John chapter 12, verse 48. John chapter 12, verse 48. The one who rejects me and rejects my words. Wait, wait, wait. We got to get everybody there. Para mas mas dali. O kaya maglagay mo yun. Sina, give us a thumbs up. Okay. Go ahead, Wilma. John chapter 12, verse 48. The one who rejects me and does not receive my words as a judge, the word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. So we're going to be judged by the words that Christ has spoken. Going back over the points we've already made. Jesus is God in the flesh. He is the one through whom the Father speaks today. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He has been given all authority on heaven and on earth. And it will be the words of Jesus Christ that will judge us on the last day. Now, we may want to look at the word of God and the apostles and the word apostle. It really means a per special envoy or a special messenger that is fully authorized to represent the sender. Uh, Jesus chose the 12 apostles to be his special ambassadors. And he gave them the power of binding and loosing his will among men. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 18. Rio? Matthew 18, verse 18. Yes, please. Truly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound on heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Okay, so what we see is that they have special authority not given to the rest of mankind. These men are divinely guided in the giving of the word of God to men. This is not an ability I have. It came to them, not to me. John chapter 16, verse 13. John 16, 13. Mary Faye. John chapter 16, verse 13. 16, 13? 16, 13, correct. It says here, But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. So who's going to do this? The Spirit. And who is the Spirit going to speak to? The Apostles. When they were guided into speaking messages from God, and they eventually wrote down these messages. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Alma, that's you. 
First uh, Thessalonians two thirteen. Yes, please. It says, and we also thank God constantly for this, that when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it as not as the word of men, but at what is really is the word of God, which is at work in you believe believers. Okay. And 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37, Resi. 1 Corinthians 14, 37. Corinthians. Verse, 30, verse 37. If anyone thinks that he is a prophet or is spiritual, he should acknowledge that the things I am writing to you are a command of the Lord. So the things that are written by the Apostle Paul are a command of the Lord. We are encouraged to stand fast in that word, in the word of the Lord. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. Annalyn. Is everybody there? Wait, hold on, let's check. Give me a thumbs up when you're there. Okay, you're good, Anna Lynn. Uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15 says, So then, Brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions that you are taught by us. Stand. Either by, Go ahead. Stand firm and hold to the traditions that you are taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. Okay. And not only are we supposed to stand firm in the word, we are supposed to prove everything by the word. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 21. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 21, Cora. Got it. <clears throat> first, first Thessalonians five, 16. Yes. Five, 21, sorry. Oh, 521. It says, but test everything, hold fast what is good. Test everything and hold on to that which is good. The word of God is not to be changed. First, uh, go to Galatians chapter 1, start us in verse 6. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. Katrina? Galatians 1 6. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Verse 7, Christina. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. Okay. Eight, please, Wilma. Eight, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be opposed. And nine, Julie. And verse nine. As we have to you, let him be opposed. Uh, sorry. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. 
not only are we not to change the gospel, we are not to add to or take away from it, are we? Somebody give me the right verse. I'm not even going to call it. Where are we going? Revelation. Revelations. Second Corinthians. Very good. Thank you, Mary Kay. Rio says thank you. She didn't even have to call a friend. <laughs> What's it say, Rio? Thank you, Mary Fay. <laughs> Real, you gonna read it? Yes. Revelations twenty two eighteen to nineteen. I yes. warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. Okay, so we can feel free to edit and change the gospel as we see fit, right? No. Oh, you can. Stand by for the consequences. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's stop the broadcast.